Welcome to part two of my necromancer series. This time we'll be looking at the roguelikes that best implement necromancy. Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, DSS for short, is a capable roguelike that supports necromancy. However, as far as minion play is concerned, the necromancy in this game is just not very good. It breaks some of my golden rules that I discussed in the previous video. Namely that minions must be useful, numerous, permanent, and your caster should be weak, having to rely on his minions to survive. In DCSS you raise minions from the corpses of slain enemies, and they appear as a skeletal version of the slain creature with a green bubble around it. Corpses do not appear every time, which makes it difficult to make minions. If you do manage to make a minion, you'll discover that the minion is not useful because it can't do much. Its attacks are weak, and it dies in a few hits. Your minions are also not permanent. They disappear after a few turns, which makes it really difficult to produce an army. You lose all your minions when you change floors as well, which is just rubbing salt into the wound. So in the end, making minions in this game seems to be pretty much completely pointless. It's a good roguelike, but they really dropped the ball on necromancy, in my opinion. The game may improve if you level up a bit and stuff, but I've never been patient enough to level up because of how bad the minions are. You'll see in this next fight coming up how three of my minions can't even take down one hobgoblin. My main character will then proceed to kill it in one hit. Which just goes to show how weak your minions are in this game. Truly disgraceful. Cheb Gonaz is disappointed! Cheb Gonaz demands minions! And this game just doesn't deliver. Maybe it will improve, maybe it won't. You're going to have to tell me because I just cannot sit through this poor minion gameplay. Disgraceful. Next up we have Dwarf Fortress. Now Dwarf Fortress is a really unique game. It's one of these brilliant games that's like a game from heaven that kind of ticks all the boxes. And to begin, you start off by generating a new world. Now if you want to play a necromancer in Dwarf Fortress, you need to generate a world that has a necromancy tower. And to increase the likelihood of getting a necromancy tower, you should raise the, the um, magic sites as high as possible. This makes it more likely that unique sites like necromancy towers will spawn. It takes a while to generate a world, and when you've got one, you'll see if there's a necromancer tower or not based on that little eye. It's like a pink eye. If you're unlucky, you might have to regenerate a map. Sometimes you have to do it two or three times until you get that perfect map, which has a tower. Sometimes you're even lucky and you get many towers, but you really only need one tower because going to this tower in game and reading a book or a special stone slab inside that tower is what's going to give you the ability to become a necromancer in Dwarf Fortress. In terms of my golden rules of necromancy, Dwarf Fortress ticks basically all the boxes. Your minions are permanent, they're useful, they're numerous, there's no limit to how many minions you can have, and you can make a minion from basically anything. From like humanoids, like dead people, to also like cows and cats or whatever else you find, you can just resurrect it and it will follow you. Now I think probably the best way to explain necromancy and dwarf fortress to you is to recount my own personal experience of necromancy for the first time in this game. So basically I generated my little world and I entered the game and I spawned in a tavern, right? The first thing I did was I convinced two people in that tavern to follow me. So these two people became my companions. I had a, an archer and I had a warrior. Then I went with these two guys out in the direction of the nearest necromancy tower. When I got to the tower, I basically lured all the undead out of it because they're slowly walking zombies, right? And I let them kill my two companions. My, my two companions soaked up all the damage for me. And while the, these zombies were beating the crap out of my poor companions, I sprinted into the tower, went upstairs and read a necromancy book. At that point, I learned the spell to animate undead and then I snuck out of that tower and hightailed it out of there as quickly as possible. By the time I got out of the tower, 
The zombies had moved on from my minions and gone somewhere else. I don't know where they went. So I found the two corpses of my companions and I resurrected these companions. So I had undead versions of the two people I'd brought with me. Then I went back to the town and as I was entering the town, right, my zombies just decided to attack everything on sight. And the first thing they, they attacked was this stray cat. So then I had this like cat corpse on the floor. And what did I do? Being Cheb Gonaz, the master necromancer, I of course raised that cat corpse. So then I had two people and a cat following me, all undead. So I figured, you know, what am I going to do with my new army? I'm going to go straight to the tavern that I started the game in and see what happens. So I enter this tavern, right? And my zombies just start attacking everyone. And it was really funny because uh, during the, pro the course of the battle, my zombies kept dying and I kept resurrecting them and they kept dying. But the corpses got kept getting like more and more mutilated to the point where it was like just limbs flying around the room and like you know i had a, a head of the one dude and then the arm of another dude and then the hand of another guy and what ended up happening was is i could resurrect all these individual pieces so i had you know a zombie hand attacking people i had some zombie head that was you know must have been rolling along the floor and like smashing into other dudes and the whole tavern was like just completely filled with blood and it was just it was hilarious and basically behind the scenes here like in my video you'll see a few clips of this entire story i didn't catch the start of it because i wasn't sure if my necromancy you know story would be successful i could have died in the tower but once i got my two guys and my cat i definitely began recording so you can see all of that and yeah in this game it's just a lot of fun to be a necromancer it also gets rid of the need to eat and, and, uh, and drink. So that's nice. You can just roam around without starving to death. So yeah, I really like the necromancy in this game. Dwarf Fortress is great. I recommend you try it out. It's free. You can just download it. And if you want to help the developer out, you can donate money to him. Tales of Marjael is a roguelike with quite a nice necromancer in it. The class is locked so you have to unlock it by playing the game long enough to be able to unlock it. While this may seem annoying, the good news is that the game has a lot of fun beginner options for a minion lover, such as the alchemist who has a powerful golem minion that can be equipped with weapons and armor and upgraded, or the summoner which is very easily unlocked and makes use of many diverse, short-lived and expendable minions. Once you do unlock the Necromancer class, you'll be met with a pretty capable Necromancer. The Necromancer meets most of my golden rules. You have numerous skeletal minions of a random type and also access to a bone golem. The minions are useful and can be made progressively more powerful. The minions are permanent and persist until killed. Finally, with a minion build, your Necromancer definitely has to rely on his minions to do most of the work. The Necromancer kind of works like this. You have a dark aura that sustains the life force of your minions. Minions outside this aura rapidly lose health and eventually perish, and minions can only be summoned inside this aura. The aura can be upgraded to be quite large, but your minions will never really be able to go off screen without dying. Minions require souls to be summoned, one soul per minion, and more souls for a golem. Souls are acquired by enemy deaths within your aura. The minions you create are purely random, but points invested in the skill, you can acquire better minions. It's a fun system, but it's certainly not perfect. Problems I've had are, some enemies can dispel your aura, and it has quite a long cooldown before it can be restored. This is more than enough time for most of your minions to die, or at least be severely damaged. Enemies like this can be absolutely fatal for a minion necromancer, and because it's a roguelike, once dead you have to start over. The minions you get are completely random. You might get skeleton warriors, skeleton archers, skeleton mages, ghouls, liches, or whatever else, but there are times when you cannot rely on what you get. For example, if you're fighting an enemy that's immune to physical damage, you need mages. 
but you're bound to get a load of warriors instead and die through no fault of your own. Also, the minions all deal friendly fire to each other and to you as well. This is especially problematic for mages, but also to a lesser extent archers. Mages mostly use ray attacks that damage everything in a line to where they shoot. If you're unlucky enough to be sandwiched between an enemy and your mages in a tight corridor, you will be absolutely obliterated. And so will any of your other minions unlucky enough to be in the way. Although there is a skill that reduces the amount of friendly fire dealt, it can never be truly eliminated. In order to alleviate these problems and make a better necromancer, I actually went ahead and modded the game to create a necromancer that fits my vision a bit better. My true necromancer mod provides the true necromancer class. It's a clone of the normal necromancer, but has almost all of the direct damage skills removed and better skills for minions added instead. I remove the aura, so minions do not need the aura to survive and also do not need the aura to be created. I kept the souls mechanic because it's quite nice, but changed it so that any enemy death will result in the soul. I made four new skill categories. The first category is skeletal, which is purely for the summoning of skeletons. There are four skills, which are summon skeleton warrior, summon skeleton archer, summon skeletal mage, and skeletal mastery. Every one of these skills allows for a max of six skeletons once fully upgraded. So you can have a max of 18 skeletons. Skeletal mastery improves the quality of your skeletons. For instance, instead of getting naked skeletal warriors with hatchets, you'll get heavily armored skeletal warriors. Because I made a special skill for every kind of minion, this solves the problem of randomness in the vanilla necromancer. If you need a particular kind of minion, you are now able to create it. The skeletal category is based around the slower creation of more powerful minions, so you can only spawn minions one at a time. This forces you to prepare more for battle and hopefully encourages you to tailor the unit composition to the situation. My next category is the flesh category. It allows you to summon ghouls, bone golems and mummies and also has a flesh mastery skill that improves the quality of the fleshy minions. Ghouls are your standard troops and leech life, but they aren't as powerful as skeletal warriors. To compensate, you can summon them in a burst of 6 at a time once fully leveled. They only have melee attacks. Bone golems are tanky and fulfill the utility role mostly. They cost no souls to create, and at max level you can have 2 at a time. Mummies are the spell casters of the flesh category. They don't work like skeletal mages do and use less direct attacks, for example spawning in loads of shadows to attack the enemy with. They can also be made in bursts of 6, and are pretty damn good. Tankier than skeletal mages, but with slightly worse damage output. These are the two main categories, but I also added support categories. The Dark Mastery category provides the Minion Strength skill, which raises the level of the minions you spawn. It affects both skeletal and fleshy minions. The Minion Resistance skill provides your minions with resistance to elements and spells, to a max of 50% resistance once fully skilled. I implemented this after noticing how magic could be a real bane to the minion build. Then I also made the soul reserve skill that raises the maximum soul cap and soul sacrifice which converts life into a soul. I made this because of the vanilla necromancer you could get into trouble if you had no minions and no souls to make more with. Finally, the soul manipulation category provides two spells. Devour Soul, which consumes the soul to restore health, and Spectral Beacon. Spectral Beacon will teleport all your minions to the targeted location at the cost of mana and souls. I made this to help overcome problems of minions being unable to chase teleporting enemies down, or being caught single file in tight areas and not being able to get a good surround on an enemy. So in my opinion, Tales of Majael, especially with my mod, but also to a certain extent without it, is the best necromancy roguelike at the moment and also offers the best or most accessible roguelike experience for beginners to try out. You get a nice open world and story with interesting environments. This is much better than the drab dungeons you usually get in a roguelike. I should probably mention that my mod isn't complete. I don't always have energy or desire to work on it, but every now and then especially when I'm playing Tales of Majael, 
I get the motivation and the willpower and I go there and work a whole bunch on it. It's mostly bug free. In fact, I think I got rid of all the bugs in it. The only thing left is additional features I want to implement. For example, I want to make um, a skill that sort of spawns in an unending stream of undead rats. Not exactly unending, but you know, every few seconds a new one comes until there's like about six of them. And whenever one of these rats dies, I want it to sort of respawn after a few turns, and that will of course cost a soul. I also want to eventually add in some really high level undead uh, minions such as uh, liches and uh, vampires. Though the problems I've had is that they haven't actually been that good. Needs a lot of tweaking to make them good in battle, especially the vampires. They seem very weak. I hope you enjoyed my roguelike necromancer video. I'll put all the links to everything and all the games and my mod into the description. In the next video I'll probably cover strategy games. I'm not sure yet though. It's most likely going to be strategy games next. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.